Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace and today is Wednesday, March 20th. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting books, baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do all day, every day. I have various social medias that you can follow me on. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Ravelry. I am most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there. And you can see all the cute shenanigans that our little orange boy, Rusty, gets up to during the week. Um, I also have show notes, so links to things that I will be talking about um, will be in the show notes, which is on my blog. So if you're on YouTube, the link to my blog is down below, or if you're on my blog already, everything is already there. I'm also a knitting pattern tech editor, so if you or if you know of someone uh, who is in need of someone to edit their upcoming knitting patterns, I would love to work with you or start a conversation. Um, I have all the additional information under the Graceful Edits tab, which is on my blog, or if you just want to send me a message on Instagram, I would love to talk to you about that. So, we have a lot of knitting to talk about. We have things to discuss, what is going on, um, so let's just get into it, shall we? Um, if you want to grab something tasty to drink, something to snack upon, something to craft upon, I was going to make myself a coffee or some kind of other beverage, but I've had a lot of caffeine already today and I don't like feeling jittery and also want to sleep well. So we're going with water. <laughs> a wise decision. I hope you are hydrated. If not, you should go drink some water. Um, maybe you're folding laundry, whatever you may doing, you may be doing. I hope it is bringing you joy or rest, or I'm helping you get through an unpleasant task. Um, if you like to do all of those things, none of those things, whatever it may be, and you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. everyone. First of all, yeah, my hair is shorter. <laughs> because everyone was dying to know. Yes, it is shorter. I have it in pigtails right now because I worked out this morning and it's not hair wash day. But um, so not accurate representation of the short hair, but it is in fact short. It is all gone. I wanted a change for the summer upcoming season and um, I love it. So I do miss parts of my long hair, don't get me wrong, I do love having long hair, but it's nice to do different things, and it's hair, it grows back. Um, second of all, yes, it is in fact Wednesday, it's not Tuesday or Monday, it's Wednesday, whoa, imagine that. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure when this is going up, if this is going up today on Wednesday, or if it's going up tomorrow on Thursday, because that's how days work. Um, but. Uh, some neighbors on this street are having some yard work and some tree cutting down and these trees are big so it's taking a lot of time and the saws are very loud and they, they've definitely been sawing today so I'm really hoping that they're done. They're still around um, working and I don't know. The trees that are being cut down are, are in people's backyard so it's not like I can see them. But I'm seeing all this stuff being brought out to the front and taken away, so. There's not a whole lot I can do, so. Better to record late than not at all, right? Right. <laughs> um, where's Rusty? Rusty is sound asleep on our love seat that is over here. He is just so precious. Um, He's just too cute. We've had some fun adventures over the past couple of days. Um, I feel like we learn a new little bit about his personality every single day. And right now he's sleeping. So I'm just going to let him sleep. But I think he definitely likes being near me, which is very sweet. Um, we have a lot of knitting to talk about. Is there anything else that I need to discuss? Um, it may rain today and tomorrow. Oh, there's the weather update. It's a little cooler, but not by much. What am I wearing? That's something. This is the Syncopated Stripe Sweater by Hannah of Sandmaid Knits. And this was a test knit that I did earlier this year. And I was feeling chilly because it's a little teeny, 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 tiny, 
tiny bit chillier and we have the air conditioner on as always and the fans were up at a higher speed because it has been warmer so I was feeling chilly. <laughs> I'm not feeling chilly because of the weather outside. I'm feeling chilly because of the weather, the weather inside. But I'll take it because I can wear my hand knits and that's fine. We will enjoy it. Is that extra? Yes, but I do not care. <laughs> Completely lost my train of thought. I do apologize. Um, maybe I do need the extra cap feeling a little sluggy but that's okay that is okay um anything else to talk about I don't think so I do have a finished object that I do not have anymore last time I mentioned maybe knitting a pair of socks for a friend whose birthday was coming up and that happened the socks were made they were given it was a wonderful moment we had a lovely conversation about socks and she loved them so I am so happy to have done that and so feeling so good to have knit that those that pair of socks very quickly and have used some more yarn for my stash for someone else so that's really nice um I do love using it for myself but I also enjoy knitting for other people if they're knit worthy so <laughs> um it was a perfect situation so all good all good but I do not have that pair of socks but let it be known that I did finish a pair of socks I started and finished a pair of socks so, let it be known um while we're on the topic of socks let me just pull up this little guy I love this bag so much it brings me so much joy I love the colors I love how small it is this is um a bag from Krista Jekyll. Yes, I always have to double check. She's got a tag on the inside. Um, she hand makes the stamps that she uses. She uses so she like cuts out the rubber and all that kind of stuff, and then stamps the fabric, cuts it, sews it, and all that jazz. This is like a waxed um, fabric on the bottom. It's great. I love it. She has incredible bags and the colors are always just so bright and happy. Um, I got to meet her and have an get another one of her bags at Woolen Folk uh, during the Rhinebeck weekend last year. So this is one, one of my sock bags and I really love it. Brings me so much joy. I did finish. I don't know if I had finished this last time we chatted, but I, either way, I did finish one sock of my birthday pair of socks. Yes, I understand. This looks tiny. I would also like to remind you, I have tiny feet. <laughs> I have very tiny. I have very narrow feet. Um, growing up, I had some friends um, whose moms would call my feet fairy feet, which as a child, or not as a child, as a kid, a teenager I thought that was the sweetest thing I love the idea of having fairy feet <laughs> and I carry that with me to today as a 31 year old person I love the fact that I have fairy feet um, this looks tiny this is definitely smaller than my normal average sock but it is only because ooh, that was a big stretch are they making noise? Are they making noise? Just go back to sleep. It's because there's an aspect of ribbing in the stitch pattern. So you got knit three, purl three, and then you got the arrangement of it such that it is probably a little less like spread out like a normal sock would if it was just plain in knit to plain knit. Um, so it's sucked in a little bit and yes, I understand. It looks small but trust me it does in fact fit so <laughs> like e even me knowing my feet looking at this it's like that looks much smaller but I knit the normal size that I make so I don't know it fits what pattern is this? This is the Crunkle Socks by Kay of the Bakery Bears. This was the first time I knit any of her patterns and well written, very well made, all that kind of very clear instructions. 
I used a sock set that was from Murray. I can never remember. The only problem with having a small bag like this is that the the big like 100 gram skein takes up most of the room and if you have something underneath of it, it's like you have to pull everything out. <laughs> Murray and Company. Ta -da. It was a sock set and it was called, or it is called, Wombcom. It was like a special colorway for Valentine's Day and my birthday being around Valentine's Day, um, I thought it was perfect for a pair of birthday socks. So I love it. I love the speckles, I love the variegation, I love the combination of the pink and the taupey brown colors. I think it's gorgeous. And I have the second one cast on it. And I'm gonna tell you all a little secret that I wasn't planning on telling anybody because no one's gonna notice when I have them on. Um, but I'm gonna tell you anyway because we're friends and we're all crafters of some sort. We'll definitely get this for sure. Please don't tell anybody. Also, please don't laugh at me. <laughs> Although I'm laughing at myself. So I give you full freedom, but also mm, let's be kind about it. So I have this beautiful cuff, I have this second cuff, and yes, one is knit in twisted rib and the other one is not. And no, I'm not taking it back because they're cuffs and I don't really care all that much and when I wear them, they'll be up on my leg and inside my pant leg and like no one will be able to notice. I don't. This is a learning situation. <laughs> I didn't check. I should have checked before I knit this entire cuff. Um, and I didn't even notice that I had done that until I had started the leg portion on this one. Um, do I feel a little silly? Yes, I do. But again, I don't really care. No one's gonna notice. And I mean, when you hold them back far, far far back here you can't tell so let's not tell anybody shall we let's just keep this little secret between you and me um not that a big a deal it's just a cuff of a sock again no one's gonna know even if they're not covered up by a pant leg like if I have them over the top of like leggings or tights or something What's that sound that's like popular in reels and on TikToks? No one's gonna know. They're gonna know. They're gonna know. Because that's definitely an accurate, accurate representation of it, but hopefully, if you know what I'm talking about, hopefully you can hear it playing in your head because I can hear it playing in mine because I find that sound very funny. Um, anyway, these cuffs are different, but at least we have a cast on second sock, you know? At least we have finished the first sock. <laughs> we are well on our way to having a pair of birthday socks and I'm happy with that. So, um, I really enjoy this pattern. It's very like, it's satisfying in a non-complicated way, which is really nice. That sounds very weird. Um, like because of how simple the stitch pattern actually is, it's really, easy just to keep on going and have the attitude of I'll, I'll just do one more repeat and then before you know it the whole socks knit itself which is really nice um we love patterns like that don't we we do indeed indeed we do um so yeah I have freed up a pair of needles that I was using for my friends pairs of socks and or pair of socks that's done um I could put, I have a couple of um, single socks that need to be cast on and things that I have stashed away. Um, I may do that, but also I really, really want to use some of the sock yarn that I got for my birthday and crack into the um, super, or the, yeah, super sock project, the sock project book by Summerlee Knits that, um, 
my sister gave me for my birthday. So I'd like to do that, but also I have socks that need to be finished, but also new socks. How can we say no? I have a really hard time. <laughs> that was another, another nice thing about knitting socks for my friend. It really scratched the itch of needing to cast on something new. Um, and I was being productive at, by doing something for someone else and accomplishing something that I wanted to do. So it was all good. So maybe I need to think of someone else who needs a pair of socks. <laughs> That's really just the answer to everything, you know. Um, so moving along, what else have we worked on? I have a project that has a little bit of a tale of woe. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> So we're gonna save that for the end. Um, so don't let me forget. Which I'm not going to forget, but don't let me forget. Um, next up, oh, I guess these are socks as well. These are socks. Um, okay. These look so much bigger than the other ones, but that's okay. Um, so I have I have talked about them recently and in previous episodes I have a group of friends that I knit with on Mondays and um, we had recently decided that we were going to, if we wanted to, or those who wanted to, could pick a sock pattern from Stone Knits, which she does like incredible color work socks. Um, such cute patterns, such fun things like flamingos and shrimp and peaches and mushrooms and things like that. And so just pick one of her patterns and you'll we can all work on them together if you want. Not, not a requirement, but either way. So at the time, um, and still applies today, <laughs> I decided that I wanted to do her cat's sock. Socks. Oh no. Oh no. Are we really doing this right now? Please. I'm recording. Don't you understand? I understand that you're doing your job, but also this is day three. Okay, we will continue on. Oh no, will we? Will we? Yes, I think we will. Never mind. <laughs> okay. While we were waiting for the leaf blower to stop being blown around everywhere, one little sweet boy, okay, we're gonna keep on going. Um, one little sweet boy came and is now snuggled up behind me, which is very sweet. And he's purring and I just wanna squeeze him. Oh my goodness. I love you, sweet baby. I love you, sweet boy. Thank you for snuggling me. You're so sweet. But I have to talk about the knitting. Okay, so I'm doing the cat socks. And because it was very fitting, very appropriate, these are my orange cat socks. Um, I started these before we got rusty. Um, and in honor of Birdie. And now we have rusty, so, and I foresee that orange cats will always be a part of my life. So, of course, I had to make orange cat socks. So I am enjoying these. I have done all of the color work except for the toe. And I am, I've kind of put these off. I'm procrastinating on these because I'm worried <laughs> that they're going to be too big. Um, which is like such a tricky thing to do because or to, to figure out, because they're color work socks, you don't want them to be too tight. That's really what happens when you knit color work socks, or when, in my experience, you knit them too tight. And so I'm knitting them on a two and a half. Yeah, a two and a half, which is what the, the pattern suggested and what I thought would make sense for me going up. Um, and the whether or not they're too big like around the foot and around the leg is really not the problem it's really more so the length of the foot and how does that work if your 
like if where you need to start doing the decreases of the toe is like halfway between in the middle of the cat, that will look kind of weird. Um, and there was instructions of what to do if that was the case, but I think that it wouldn't really work because then I'd have to chop the cat in half and it would look kind of weird if you had like, if you, because you couldn't do a full cat, then you had like so much extra space without any kind of color work, um, if that makes sense. So I have uh, procrastinated on trying these on. I really need to do that because I started doing the toe decreases and realized that if that was the case, then I could do the, the toe decreases more rapidly opposed to having a row in between and get, kind of shave off some extra space excuse me, some extra rows in there that would be a problem for making it too long. Um, and again, like I said, I put this off. I suppose I could try this on right now. Shall we do that together? How about, <laughs> this is accountability. I'm, if I don't do this now, when am I gonna do it? Okay, sorry, Rusty. We're trying these on and also not wanting to snag any of the floats. I feel like I did a pretty good job of catching my floats though. This is also a new heel. I've never done a short row heel. Ooh, oh, oh wow, those fit so well. <gasps> Why was I worried? Why was I so worried? These look so good. I am not gonna lift my leg up there because I think that would be weird and also it's just my toes picking, sticking out, picking out, sticking out. Um, and honestly, I feel like I could probably just do the, the regular toe. How exciting. <gasps> wow, those look so good. I am so proud of myself. Whoa. Look at me go. <laughs> And that heel actually fits very well. I was really concerned because it looked weird. And I had never done one before, so I was like, I don't know if this is how it's supposed to look. I don't know if this is what is supposed to happen. This is learning experience. We all have them, regardless of our level of knitting. Hey, sweet baby. <laughs> he straped himself across my back here. His head is over here and his back legs are over here. <laughs> You are such a little sweetheart. I love you. Um, did you hear me talking about my orange cat socks? My orange sockies. So, I'm happy with these. Look at us go. I'm glad we could experience that together. What a feeling of joy and excitement and success and progress and wow. I feel so good about that. <laughs> So many worries have just been wiped away. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be darned. Um, <laughs> my yarn, what is my yarn? My The main color is this, which is a Regia. Do I have the ball band in here? I don't know if I do. Is this it? Ooh. Yeah, I think this is it. Regia Premium Silk Color, da da. And then all the orange bits and pieces have come from my stash. One of them was from my advent calendar this past year from Charming You. One of these was Knit Picks. One of these was uh, The Uncommon Thread. One of these was Big Sky Yarn Company. One of these, I think that was Miss Babs. I honestly don't know. I am just so in shock that these worked out so well. I need to have more faith in myself. <laughs> wow, I am over the moon. Look at me go. I just really need to cast on the second one soon. Otherwise, it's not gonna get done. I'm excited about this heel. This is exciting, the short row heel. I'm interested to see how they wear on my foot, like when I have them 
on and I'm not just trying them on, you know? So, um, I have two of my friends who are doing her mushroom socks. Or the mushroom socks. They're so cute. Um, I think I have the peach pattern because I love peaches. Um, I... I think there's like a cafe one that's got like coffee cups on it or something like that. I have that one too. Um, two things to think about in the future. I am, again, I'm just so happy with how that turned out. Wow. Look at me go. I didn't know that would work as well as it's going to. So, yay. <laughs> Next up, we're done talking about socks. All the socks are done being discussed. Um, the next up is my languishing whip that I am trying to work through. Goodness gracious, I am, I, don't get me wrong, I do love this. I am so excited to be able to wear this. I'm excited to be able to um, eventually wear this when it gets cold here in November. <laughs> and when I like travel to colder climates. Um, but goodness gracious, it is a little boring now. Um, that is my Rain or Shine Shawl <laughs> by Stephen West. Um, and it's just a slog at this point. The ropes really aren't even that long. Like, they're not that long. It's on a big needle. It's on an eight. I should be flying through this. But for some reason, I am just having a hard time. Um... I did make a lot of good progress though. I made it almost through a full color repeat. This is where I was last time we chatted. Um, could it have been more? Yes, but I knit a whole pair of socks. So we're gonna move this right now. Um, I would really, really love to be done with this. Also because there is, I had some yarn acquisitions this week or the last week as well. Um, and I do have a project in mind, and it does require eights, and, uh, pretty sure I have eights available, but, but, I'm using this Hands the Future project, which I'm going to show you in a hot second, as, like, motivation. I need to get this off these eights, because I want to use these eights. Um... Um, I really just want to be done with it. <laughs> I was chatting with my friends um, of the Monday Knitting Group and I was like, I think I'm ready to be done. And they were like, no, I you will not be happy with that. And I was like, I know deep down that you're right and I know that I really need to keep on going, but I really don't want to and I should just cast off now. And it was a funny conversation of them trying to convince me that I needed to even though logically I know I need to keep on going and not cast it off. It looks like it's pretty big, right? It looks like it's pretty big, but I mean in theory it's not enough to really wrap around quite yet. It's close. It's close. But not what I was, not what I have envisioned in my mind, so. Um, I love my colors. I am so happy with how these colors have continued to turn out. I am not, I'm glad it's one of those things that I'm not like, oh man, I've made this so far and now I'm not really a fan of these colors anymore. Not happening. I'm using Knitting for Olive mohair in various colors. I'm loving it. It's great. Super easy pattern. So much so that eventually it will get boring. Um, that's on me. That's not on anyone else except for me. And, I mean, for a while, whenever I sat down to knit and I had a good chunk of time, I would make sure that I did at least one color repeat. Um, and that seemed to be good, and then I fell out of that habit. Otherwise, I would have had a lot more to show you, but that's okay. It's fine. Um... It will eventually get done, right? Oh, that was a big old stretch. That was a big stretch, sweet baby. I just really want to knit socks. I just want to knit socks and socks and socks and socks. Hi. Hi. 
You're so cute. Rusty, are we going to be able to edit this today and get it up? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait. I know. Oh my goodness, hello, sweet baby. Oh, okay, hello. Look, look how handsome you are. What a distinguished gentleman. He's like, hello everyone, I'm going to be a weekly, or uh, not a weekly, I'll be a regular part of this podcast now. Because I do understand that this is called the Catnip Podcast and I need to make my regular appearances just so you don't forget that I'm around. Just so you know. Rusty, I love you so much. I love you so much. You're such a sweet boy. Um. What was I talking about? The rain or shine shawl. And then we got distracted by the Rusty. I do love you, my dear Rusty. Are you so happy right now? Are you so happy? She's so cute. Oh, Rusty. You're a sweet little boy. Rusty, you see how cute you are? You see how cute you are? Rusty, you got things I need to do. Oh, whoa, sorry. Sorry, that was a big noise. Whoa. Okay. Rusty, I'm so sorry, but I gotta put you down. I gotta put you down. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Why are you just so precious? You're so precious. Can I put you down? He's like, please don't put me down. I don't want to be put down. Whoa. Okay. Hello. What a sweet little boy. Into your little box. You want to come back up here? Come on. Good boy. Good boy. I love you. I love you. Okay. Moving along. So we've got three more projects to talk about and then some yarn. No, we got four more projects to talk about and some yarn acquisitions. I'm gonna, I didn't really make any progress on this at all and I haven't worked on this in a while so I'm gonna very briefly talk about this but I pulled back out my Elton Pullover by Hohi Locatelli and I am using some very special um, Gilmore Girls yarn from Sorella. And this is what I have. And that is the front. And this is the back. And I'm just currently knitting around and around and around and around. And I'm loving it. And I think it's just so beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. The Surrey is Dragonfly Inn. And the fingering weight, um, the regular fingering weight that I'm using is called I Will Follow. Um, which are Gilmore Girls references. It's from their Gilmore Girls collection and I love Gilmore Girls with all my heart. How many times can I say Gilmore Girls? A lot of times. <laughs> um, so this was a Christmas present from Sam. He um, very kindly did some shopping with some general instruction from me but he ultimately picked it out for me so in also in that regard it is special um he knows me very well and yeah so I'm just plugging along I think I did two stripes as a whole and I just for some reason I needed like I was like I need something that I haven't worked on in a while and I need something that is mindless completely mindless and that was perfect so I'm wanting to put this back into rotation We'll see um, how my mood knitting strikes. We will see how that works out. So that is a thing. 
Then next up, we do have a new cast on in this cute little bag that I do love very dearly. Um, I got this from Wool Needle Thread, and I actually got it from Houston Fiber Fest last year in June. They got some really cute bags. Um, so I decided that I wanted to use a special skein of yarn. Whoa. And I wanted to guess on something new. Whoa. <laughs> um, so I justified it, and that was totally fine. It's all good. I'm using Morningside Fiber. Morningside Road Fiber, excuse me. Um, this is just regular single ply superwash merino in the colorway Mist. Um, I got this from Houston Fiber Fest. Uh, in 2019, I think. 2020? No, 2019. Yeah. Um, and I believe that they are a uh, Texas dyer. I don't know if they still dye yarn. I remember, if I remember correctly, last time I tried to look them up, I had a hard time finding them on Instagram. Um, they may have they may have another name at this point I don't know whatever I'm gonna do some research and if it is it'll be in the show notes um but I'm doing a little like asymmetrical shawl and this one came out recently and I when it came out I like just I was very inspired to use this skein specifically. When I saw the original, I was like, ooh, that one skein that I've had for a really long time, which is a lot of them, that one skein that I did technically get to go with something else for another pattern, but I clearly haven't done that. So we're gonna break those two skeins up and we're, I'm gonna do this. So it is called, actually, now I can't even remember what it's called. So sorry, I think it's like, it had Frida Fam. Frida something by Trin Annely Frida Feather Frida Feather Shawl um, by Anne of Trin Annely. So I um, really love her patterns. I feel like I haven't really knit a ton of them, um, but. It's got these really beautiful little feathery stitches along the edge. So it's got a, a, a border that you do as you go, which is really nice. I thought it was a you go back and do it after you're done, but no, which is really nice. And then you've got these occasional rows of just the feather stitch, which is nice. So instead of like an eyelet row or something like that, you have a row of feathers or flowers or whatever they may be called. They have a lot of different names, but other than that, it's just plain garter stitch. And I'm loving it. It's just slightly complicated enough that I need to like pay attention to what I'm doing and look at the pattern, but it's not complicated enough to be like, oh my goodness, I need every single ounce of brain power to work on this, um, which has been nice. <laughs> So it's been very enjoyable. Obviously I'm not too far into it. My rows are still very short and it's another one of those things where you can, you weigh your yarn as you go and you just kind of like figure out how many repeats you can get into your skein of yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm just plugging along and having a great time and um, it's very enjoyable. So it's fun to do something different and it's really nice to kind of have a palette cleanser almost of like a spontaneous cast on using yarn that you really love. And I couldn't stop thinking about that once I saw that pattern. And when it came out and I was doing some yarn organization and um, I like, I had pulled that skein out cause it was one of the colors that I had reorganized and re um, situated. And I was like, oh man, need to use this and the shawl came out and I was like oh man that's what I need to do <laughs> and couldn't stop thinking about it so I did it it was all good all good um last up before we go into the tale of woe the tale of woe um I have my 
what did I call it? Ghosties, ghosts in the apple orchard. Ghosts in the orchard. What well, I, I had a funny name for it last time. I can't remember what it was, but it's Ghosts in the Orchard. It's by Thea Coleman. <laughs> this is a cabled, all over cabled V-neck vest. And um, I'm using Cascade Eco Wool. And here's my progress so far. I'm pretty proud of how that looks, you know? Um, yeah, so I've made it through one full pattern repeat, um, which is exciting. I feel like that is some type of accomplishment. I'm gonna move my progress keeper because I am using this to mark the front as well. Um, I've got a bunch of fuzz in my nose, probably from the rain or shine shawl. Um, anyway, I'm knitting this as a knit along with a friend. She's also doing this. And yeah, I haven't worked on this in a couple days, um, mainly because of the socks that needed to be done. And I just, I think I had done too much cabling too quickly. And with the charts and everything, I was just like, oh, my brain is a little burnt out, so we're gonna take a rest. <laughs> but it does go quickly. Like once you get in the rhythm, like it's really easy to kind of like get a couple rows in which doesn't really add up to much because your some of the rows are so intensely cabled that they just take for forever so then you spend a lot of time doing one row and you're like oh my goodness I accomplished so much and it's actually only two rows <laughs> which is a little discouraging I'm being so positive right now I'm sure you really want to make this best now but um as it is with a lot of cables <laughs> you know um, that is the downside, but worth it because I think this is just gorgeous. I think this is going to be stunning and, um, I think it's really good. I love this yarn for so many different things. Cascade Eco Wool, like you just can't go wrong. The, for what you're getting, it's a really good price point. It's good yarn. It's good colors, good price, good yardage, the stitch definition is just really like it's just perfect for cables in my opinion it's perfect for a lot of things but it really makes cables shine and this was old stash and i have a sweater that i knit years ago and i've literally never worn <laughs> at all that's knit out of this color um and it took up a lot of yarn so once i'm done with this little floppy cake of yarn um i'll just start frogging from the other sweater which is nice so we're just making progress forward and plugging along you know so ghost in the orchard by thea coleman cascade eco wall we love to see it and now everybody are we ready for my tale of woe I don't want to go into it too much. There's really not a ton to say. Um, but uh, it just is just this is a reminder, everyone. Regardless of what and how long you've been knitting or crocheting or crafting or whatever, regardless of that, regardless of skill level, there are times where even the most experienced people can really make some silly beginning beginner mistakes. <laughs> and that was me. That was me this week, this past week. Um, this past Sunday, I was working on my love note by Tin Can Knits. It was my birthday sweater. I cast it on for my birthday. I was loving it. I've shown it to you all many times. And I had to buy it for the sleeves. I was just plugging along. I had done the neckline. I went back into the neckline because you, you do the provisional cast on. I learned a new provisional cast on. I was thriving. Such a beautiful sweater. Um, and so I went to try it on so I could see the length of the body to make sure if I needed to lengthen it or if I wanted to shorten it or whatever it was. Um, I put half of it on a Scooby 
and I was like, this is odd to me that I'm having a hard time of dividing this and still having enough room on the Scooby and on my needles because I had like a 32 inch needle on one side and a full on Scooby on the other side. And normally that should be fine. Normally that's fine. Um, but it was not fine. And I was like, this is a little odd, but we'll just continue on. We'll try it on. We'll, do, we'll, we'll figure it out. I try it on or I hold it up before I try it on. I hold it up and I have discovered that the sleeves are significantly placed forward and there's so much more fabric and stitches in between on the back and there's probably like the both sleeves may have started like at the where halfway on my shoulders like right here so they were like here that's not where sleeves go um <laughs> so, so in my mind I was like in I knew deep down that I had really messed up I knew that that was the thing and um but I was like, you know what, maybe this is, this is just the way that it is because there wasn't any short row shaping in the pattern and maybe that's why they're like some kind of shaping. I was trying to like justify why this was so wrong. <laughs> Cause I knew I had followed the pattern. I knew I had done it correctly. Or so I thought. Little did she know. Um, it's foreshadowing. So I try it on and I can't for the life of me get it to sit right with the sleeves being so far forward because then it, if I have it back where sleeves normally are, the neckline's way up here and the neckline in the back was just so low and the amount of additional fabric that was part of the body was so much right oh hello are we moving and I know that for myself and the sizes that I normally make there's a good chance that usually there's going to be extra fabric in the body so I just add decreases along the side like it's no big deal that's just I do that with a lot of sweaters and it fits me better and it still gives me the like the bust measurement and the arm measurement that I'm looking for um, cool. You can modify your knits and that's all fine and good and works well and that's the beauty of crafting because you can make it fit you. Um, so I was like, okay, we're gonna really have to like fit in a bunch of decreases because I don't have too much space left <laughs> before I am done with the body and it's gonna turn into a balloon and this is this is not gonna work I need to either rip back to the sleeve divide and re redo this and resituate the um the sleeve or no I need to resituate the um decreases so I can make it work because this is clearly the size that I wanted to make what so I rip back to the sleeves right before the sleeves. No, did I rip back to the sleeves? I think I rip back to the sleeves. And I was like, oh no, you know what? Before I rip back to the sleeves, I counted my stitches. And I had a lot more. I, at that time, I can't remember how many I had. It was significantly more than what I needed for my size. And so I was like, uh-oh, this is the problem. Um, I don't, and the stitches that were cast on for the underarm, that was, that double that was not even enough to cover how many extra stitches I had. <laughs> and as I'm like trying to troubleshoot this in my mind, there's a little voice that's like, you really messed up and you don't know why and this is a silly mistake and you don't know why but you're gonna have to start over and I was like no 
myself. I'm not gonna have to start over. I'll figure this out. I love this. I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work. So I rip back to right before the sleeve divide and I redo the sleeve divide. And whoa, the sleeves are still in the wrong spot and I recount my stitches and because there were there are some kind of like raglan stitches after is either right before or right after you divide for the sleeve so I was like maybe that's that still wouldn't have accounted for all the extra stitches and I was like well okay we're gonna use our our tech editing brain here what is what could be the problem that is really nice though about having the the tech editing abilities and knowledge that I have has really been able to or enabled me to like really work through problems that I've come across in my own knitting. Um, very humbling, very helpful, but still very humbling and slightly embarrassing. And that's why I'm sharing this story with you as a reminder, again, regardless of your level, regardless of how long you've been knitting, the things that you knit, you can still mess up. And I'm not done with my story yet. We're almost done though, so I'm, I'm not gonna ramble on too much longer. So I'm like, okay, I know that I had three total increase rows. I had one right after the lace yoke. I had two right before the lace yoke. And there were no increases within the yoke itself. So I knew that the problem had to have either happened before or after, which was kind of nice. I didn't have to fiddle faddle with the lace itself. Um, so I was like, I need to go back to the beginning to see what this stitch count is. And if it's the right one, then I know that that narrows it down to two possible places where it could be the problem. And if it is the problem, then wonderful. I have picked the right one and we, we've done enough counting. So I also keep in mind, I have already done the neckline. So I've gone back, I've picked up my special provisional cast on with my Scooby. It worked great. And I was so excited because it looked really good. And <laughs> So I had to figure out where that stopped or where the body stopped and where the, the neckline started and um, how many rows I had done before the first increase. So I found the, the, a right row to count from, which was right before the first increase. And I counted and I had 36 extra stitches <laughs> pre first increase route which means I cast on 36 extra stitches <laughs> I have no idea how that happened <laughs> I cast on on my birthday I remember there was really nothing stressful going on there was nothing distracting going on I was like going to town so in my mind, I was like, okay, so I did this new type of cast on and maybe that for some reason had me double my stitches, which no, that was not, that number was not double what my size was supposed to be. So I just randomly cast on 36 extra stitches. I got to the, the 96 for or whatever for the it's either the medium or the large or whatever. And I was like, I'm just gonna keep on going and make this so much bigger than the size that you are looking for, which is makes total sense. Then why the sleeves were pushed forward because the numbers were not right. If I had cast on the right number, it would have worked just fine. Cause also during this entire process, I'm like, there is no way that this pattern is incorrect. This has to be me, this is only me, because there have been so many people who have made this sweater. So many beginning sweater knitters, beginning lace knitters have knit this sweater and have come out with flying colors. Why, why am I having so much problem with this? 
it's because I had 36 extra stitches. And <laughs> I, when I figured that out, I was like, I could cry about this. This is nothing really dramatic to cry about, but I think I, at that point, I was so frustrated and I was like, I really messed that up so badly. How did I do that? Why did I do that? What was I thinking? Um, so it's all been frogged. It's all been frogged. It's all been frogged. <laughs> It will still become a love note. Do not worry. I'm still going to do this. And I love this yarn. It's Lavender Fiber Company. And it's a beautiful colorway. I loved knitting the lace. I loved knitting it. Um, and whoa, when I cast this back on, my rows are going to be so much shorter. And I've already done it once. So now it's going to go even faster. The positives, you know. Um, so it actually worked out very well to have something to frog because I was FaceTiming with my mom earlier this week and she also discovered that she had a similar problem of just a, the size that she was making of a weekender light was just way too big and she also had to do some frogging as well. So we had a little, um, FaceTime frogging party, if you will, and frog things together. So, again, just as a reminder, never, don't assume, don't think that people who have had a lot of knitting experience, who do knit complicated things, that we don't make random <laughs> mistakes like that. Like, why 36? What was I thinking? Like, and it's not like that number didn't match up with any other sizes. So it's not like I was following a different size. It's not that I got confused and was following a, or like I cast on for a different size and not the one that I had originally planned to do. <laughs> the ultimate tale of woe, I had to frog almost an entire sweater. At least I hadn't done the sleeves. Um, and obviously there was mohair involved and it really wasn't the most smooth process as it could be. It wasn't as bad as it could be, but it wasn't smooth. Um, so that was unfun, uncomfortable, not fun. Um, 36 stitches. How did that happen, everyone? What did I do? I don't know. I just got really carried away. I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited. And I know that I counted, like, what was the problem? It, I'm never going to know. And that's okay. That is okay. It makes for a funny story now. Goodness gracious, I did not think it was funny then. But we think it's funny now. <laughs> But just a reminder, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes the silly beginning mistakes that you think that people don't after years and years, but it happens. We don't know why, but it happens. <laughs> so take heart. If you are feeling down about mistakes that you make during your crafting process, just understand that we all do it. <laughs> we all do it. Some maybe more often than others, but that's, it is what it is. It's all learning. We're all human. It's just, we're, it's a hobby. It's, it's fun. So, and sometimes we cry about it. <laughs> but we didn't cry this time because it was just too frustrating. <laughs> and there have been other projects that I've done over the years that I have made mistakes like that on and I have cried about and a very valid because feelings are valid, but um, that one was not worth. I was the feelings that I was feeling were more frustration rather than like emotional crying about it. Though I could have cried from from, from frustration. That's probably more what I was feeling, but Either way, that is my tale of woe. 
And now we have shared in this tale of woe. I hope maybe you laughed and got a giggle out of it because <laughs> that's all we're gonna get out of this sweater right now until I re-knit it. <laughs> when am I gonna recast it on? Hopefully sooner rather than later, but right now I'm feeling a little, a little like I need some space from it, you know? You know, I need to need to let it chill, have my feelings calm down a little bit, and not worry about it, and it'll be okay. Whatever. So, that's my tale of woe. Thank you for coming to my tale of woe talk. <laughs> Story time, whatever it may be. I have one little yarn acquisition that I want to show you all, and I'm very excited about this. So this is the project that is needing the size eights that my current rain or shine shawl is uh, occupying. So as soon as that is done, I'm casting this on because everyone, I'm going to make a rift tee out of these two skeins of Heathered Handmaid's Merino Linen Sock in the eucalyptus colorway, which is this beautiful, very sagey, not as green, more blue, bluey sage, but obviously eucalyptus color. Heather was having a sale to celebrate her anniversary of having Heathered Handmaids, which is very exciting. And so I um, treated myself to these two skeins. I have not knit with her linen sock before and I'm very excited. Um, love the Rift tee. Um, and yeah, so it's it's more of a summery spring top. I have various uh, summer or spring tops that I do want to make. I have yarn for things, and maybe that's a topic for future episodes or something like that, but I couldn't tell you what I want to make necessarily. I have yarn for things, but I don't know what exactly what each set of yarn goes to which pattern. But I do know this is going to be a rift tee, and I will knit this on my size 8s that is currently being used, but I will finish that shawl before I cast this on because I will finish this shawl. <laughs> you know, it is going to get done. It's just a matter of how fast. But I really want to make this, and I'd like to make it soon. So you'd think that that would be good encouragement and positive inspiration to finish the shawl, but apparently it's really not moving me as much as I thought it would. <laughs> but anyway, so Heathered Handmaid's Merino Linen Sock in the Eucalyptus colorway. I believe Heather has some of this base still left in her shop after the anniversary sale, which was a couple weeks ago at this point. Um, but it is a great, um, feels like it's going to be a great summery, lightweight yarn. I'm very excited to knit with it. It seems very similar. It's a little bit smoother than um, Malabrigo Sisura, which I've also knit with, and my um, Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin, um, which I love. That's knitted off Sisura, and this, seem, this reminds me of it, but this is a little bit smoother. The Sisura had more, has a silk content, this does not. Um, which I'm very excited to use this, because it, it's very, very smooth, but I like that it has the linen in it, which is very exciting. So, anyway, Rift Tea by... Jacqueline C. Slack. Yes. So, and I already have the pattern. It's all ready to go. All I need are those eights. That's all I need. And I need to wind up the yarn. But that's not happening until the eights are available. <laughs> you know? You know? Actually, I think these are on eights, too. Oh, yeah. This is on an eight, too. I don't think this is getting done anytime soon, though. Um, not like the shawl should be. We're using the shawl as the, the motivator, you know. Anyway, that is all that I have for you all this week, this time. 
Um, thank you for being patient with me while we waited out the neighbor's yard work and tree removal. Um, such is life, but we do what we can, and here we are. So, it's all good. <laughs> Um, this is probably going to go up on Thursday because there goes the school bus. It is getting late in the day and I have, I have other things that I need to do and I don't think I'm going to get it done today. But that's okay. Thank you for being patient. I really appreciate it. Um, I have social medias. I have show notes information. I have tech editing information. All the various places. If I forget to put anything anywhere, or if you have any questions, or if you just want to say hello, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram. I would love to say hello, or provide you with information that I may have forgotten. Rusty is meeting my back. Hi, sweet baby. You a sleepy baby? I just love you. My little co-host. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, those are some loud purrs while I scratch his little chin. Oh, I love you so much. Sweet baby. I hope you've had a wonderful couple of weeks. I hope that your crafting plans have all been successful. And if you have crafting plans in the future, I hope that they continue to be successful whatever they may be. I'd like to finish some socks. I like to start some socks. I like to finish the rain or shine shawl and cast on my rift tee. Also start my second cat sock because goodness gracious, what a exciting thing to have figured out. Someone's walking their dog. I'm glad we could have, we tried on that sock together. <laughs> Why was I procrastinating? I really need to just trust my gut more. I knew that it would be okay, but I was worried that it wouldn't, and so I was putting it off. Oh my goodness. It'll be fine. It's just knitting. Or crafting. Whatever it may be. Um, all those things. I'd also like to cast on my love note again before we talk next, but we will see. You will see. I'm still counting it as my birthday sweater though because technically I did start it. Everything got wound up and started and collected um, on my birthday for my birthday, so that will be that. But obviously we had, we had a little bit of a setback. We're gonna have to re-knit the whole thing again. But that's okay, because we didn't need those extra 36 stitches. <laughs> I honestly think it may have actually been bigger than the largest possible size, if not close to, which is not what I was looking for. We've already, we've already talked about this. We need, we just need to move on. We've said our piece. I've shared the story. Hello, little child. I love you. Are you stretching? Oh, those little peeties. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for being you and being patient again. I appreciate it. Um, if you have crafty plans, I hope that they are so successful. Um, we've already got over my crafty plans. I'm losing steam, and honestly, listening to Rusty Purr is making me a little sleepy. Oh, sweet boy. Oh my goodness. He's so sleepy. Oh my goodness. Rusty, I'm getting sleepy too. But it's Wednesday, and all the laundry is done. I don't have to fold laundry, so that is a positive today. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to sit here and not really say anything, so we're going to close out this episode. Um, thank you so much for being here. You are wonderful. You are enough. And make sure you cast on the right amount of stitches. Always double check. I don't always double check, clearly. 
please double check. You will save yourself a big headache <laughs> and a lot of questioning about why it's not working out. <laughs> the lace worked fine though, which is also another weird thing, but whatever. those things. I've said all the things. Um, and with that, little Rusty says goodbye. Goodbye. He's like, I'm so asleep and I'm so happy back here. I'm needing your sweater. Oh yeah. Anyway, I'm having cat time. So I think it's also time for a nap or something. Anyway, sorry. I'm getting distracted. Anyway, Thank you for watching. 